Hello there fellow model makers. Welcome to the second part of our Edward Profi Pack 132nd scale BF109 E3 build. In the last video, we completed the cockpit and so it's time to start putting the engine together. I have already cut and cleaned the parts that make up the main engine head. Now, I just glue everything in place. It's a very well detailed, nice looking engine. I paint the entire engine and all parts with this Tamiya X1 Black. Some parts are then painted with RLM grey to match the inside of the cockpit. The engine block remains black. And some other parts are painted with aluminium, as indicated in the instructions. I had also covered all surfaces that need to be glued with artist's masking fluid. Now that the paint has dried, I remove the protective liquid. It is best that when parts are glued, there is no paint, varnish or any other substance between the two plastic surfaces. A few of the pieces need some detailing, like some wires on this piece, which I paint white and yellow. Some detail painting is also done on the engine. While I try to keep the paint job as clean as possible and apply paint only on features that need to be painted, there is always some inadvertent spillage. I will later show you how some cleanup can be done when we weather the engine.
it's time to dry brush the engine with some aluminium paint. I next gave all the pieces a coat of gloss varnish and once that was dry I started applying Tamiya's black panel line wash. However right now I will be using this wash to clean up some of the detailed paintwork I did earlier on the engine. The principle is pretty much the same as applying a pin wash. It's just that this time I use the pin wash technique to cover up any extra paint that I applied by mistake. This helps me give shape and definition to tiny details that would otherwise look poorly painted. I just touch the edge of the painted feature with the panel line brush and then let the wash do its job. Once again on this piece, I had painted some wires white and blue. Right now, they lack any detail and don't really look good. But the moment I add some wash, suddenly we can now clearly see two blue wires. And once again, the same technique is applied on this piece. Later, all extra wash is removed with a brush dipped in either odorless spirit or in turpentine. Engine exhausts are now given a base coat of burnt umber. You can choose any brown or red that you want depending on your personal preference. I use this rust pigment set from Vallejo to add rust colors and texture to the exhausts. I use some pigment fixer but I have also often used turpentine which seems to work just as well.
Once the engine is assembled, I dirty it up further with these AK Interactive washers. And here is the finished engine. Looks pretty good. Right, with everything painted and glued in place, it's time now to join the two fuselage halves. This step was to be the beginning of my disappointment with the kit. The exhaust did not slide inside the opening for them on the fuselage. Instead, as I tussled and toiled with the parts, I managed to loosen a few of the exhaust pieces. This continued for several minutes. In the end, I finally somehow managed to squeeze in one side of the fuselage. The cockpit, gratefully, went into place a little more easily. And here is what the inside of our kit looks like. Nice. To fix the second fuselage half, I removed two of the exhaust from the engine. This helped me slide the fuselage half over the engine much more easily. But my problems were not over. The two halves do not come together quite as well as one would expect from an Edward kit. There were gaps at several places and I had to move section by section gluing the halves together. Even though I did eventually manage to squeeze the parts together, I can already tell that this is going to be one huge putty and sanding festival. There was also an alignment problem at a few places, like here. I tried to minimize the mismatch by physically twisting and holding the pieces in the right place. Though it did help a little, there is still a step here that will need fixing later. Anyway, I let the cement set for a day and then started with the putting. I am using this Liquitex modeling paste which I find works as well as any putty and is a lot cheaper. The paste is applied generously on the gap. Because I also need to compensate for a step or uneven surfaces, I have to apply more putty than if I had only a gap to contend with. Once the putty was dry, the sanding began. First with the coarse side of the sanding stick, working my way up to a finer grit. There was another problem with the joint here which was that the leading and trailing edge of the joint was also not flush on. 
so I'm using my hobby knife to carve out a new leading edge that is straighter. Next, yep, you guessed it, more sanding. In between the cycles of puttying and sanding, as I waited for the putty to set, I cut and cleaned the parts for the wings. As always, the parts were all given a base coat of black. The insides of the wheel wells were painted in aluminium, as shown in the instructions. Finally, the wings were glued together. Right fellow model makers, so this is where we have reached in this edition. The engine and cockpit are in place with the fuselage halves glued in place. The wings are ready to be attached, but that was easier said than done. And my troubles with this kit were just beginning. Anyway, that will have to wait till the next edition of this series. I hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time, have a great time and happy modeling.